we are going to construct a frequency distribution with this raw data. Um, and this data, just so that we can use it as we move along, is um, a collection of 40 pennies. So in 99, um, a class of students collected 40 pennies and then they wrote down the year of each of these pennies. And so we're going to organize these 40 data values into a frequency distribution. First thing that you want to kind of decide when you, when you construct a frequency distribution is the number of classes that you want. Um, the number of classes on your frequency distribution. And to, to kind of get there, we first look at the range and then we kind of think about um, the amount of data that we have and how big we want these classes to be and what their class width is. So we'll kind of go through that process now. Um, so let's find the range. The range is the difference between the highest data value and the smallest data value. Um, our highest data value should be 99, and it is, because this was in 99 when we collected the pennies. And our lowest value is right here, it says 66. So we have a range of 33. Uh, so as we think about how many classes that we want, we want to keep in mind um, that we don't want to spread them out too much and have you know, 20 classes for a range of 33, that would be kind of silly. Um, there wouldn't be much data in each class, maybe just one, one or two pieces of data. Um, but we also don't want to get too small. We don't want three classes and then, then they get all collected into those three classes and we don't see the significant shape of the data either. So, um, but most of the time we want a number of classes between 5 and 15 is kind of a rule. We can bend it, but that's kind of the, the rule that we, we deal with when we construct a frequency distribution. Um, and then for the data that you guys are going to be analyzing in this class, you're probably going to stick around 5, 6, 7, maybe up to 10, but probably not. I tried a few things. I tried um, 6 and 7, and I landed on 7 pretty quickly because when I took 33 and divided it by 7, this is how you find the class width, which is the next thing you want to do. So this is to find the class width. You take um, the range and you divide it by the number of classes that you want. When I did 7, I got 4.71. And a class width, we put a ceiling function on this. Um, and the ceiling means to round up the value to the nearest whole number. Always round it up. So even if this was 4.01, we would still round it up to 5. Okay. And I like a class width of 5. Uh, it's odd. We like an odd class width because then our midpoint is a whole number. Um, it's, it's a reasonable value. I like having 5 data values and, and we just like the number 5. So I saw that quickly and I was like, 7 classes it is. Um, so 6 I think gave us a 4 and so that was a little bit small for a class width and it was an even number so I went to 7 and that was, that was what I decided on. So keep in mind our class width is 5 and we want to start our class limits for our frequency distribution. So this is our class limits. Our frequency distribution also keeps up with a tally. I'll show you why we do that in just a second. And then our frequency. Okay. Our class limits always start with our smallest data values. So here it would be a 66. Our class width is 5. Um, and so the difference between 66 and our next lower class limit is, should be 5. So 66 plus 5 is 71. So that's going to be our next lower class limit. And the reason why it's this way, vertical, and not horizontal is because we, our class width is the number of data values that are in that class, the number of data, um, not data values, but the number of numbers that would land right there. So 66, 67, 68, 69, and 70. So that makes five. Uh, and so that's why 
this goes up to 70, all those values, 66, 67, 68, 69, and 70, is going to land right here, and that's what our class width is representative of. So that's why we're adding 5 vertically um, as we come up with our class limit. So we'll keep on doing that until we get 7 classes. So 76, which would make this 75. 81, which would make this 80. 86. 91, 96, and of course that is 7. So now we have 7 classes, and we of course just add 4 to get to this last, because this would be 101 if we added 5, um, and so making this last class limit upper class limit 100. So you can kind of go out down and check. You should be able to add 5 and get to all these. And the difference between all these should be 5, which they end in 5. So that's nice. All right. Um, so frequency distribution, just a simple frequency distribution, has the class limits and then the frequencies. Um, and so we, using the tally column here, though, just to make our life simpler um, and it's how we arranged our data into this. So taking this raw data and arranging it into this frequency distribution. And I think the best way to do this is just to start right here with your first data value and putting a tally where it lands. Um, so 96, of course, is going to be right here. And I'm just going to put a tally because that's where it is. Then we'll move on to 98, and it goes here, 97. 96, 83 is going to be our first one in a different class. It's going to be right here. And we'll just keep doing this for every data value and putting a tally where it lands. So I stopped 83. All right, so I just tallied up the data, got it into um, the frequency distribution tallies here, and now I can count up my tallies and record my frequencies. So the tallies are just to get us to be able to record our frequency, count them up, and we get our frequencies. Okay, so there's a frequency distribution of this raw data, and now we can look at it and start analyzing it so much easier um, now that we can organize it in just this very simple and easy way.